All right, what's up, everybody? Um, this is my uh, back porch garden. Um, this is my beginner garden. This is my first one. First time ever growing it, and um, I wanted to start very simple. Got some tomatoes, cilantro, basil, a zucchini plant here. I just started lar doing large pots and a raised bed here. One, I don't have to bend over all the time. And I just wanted to see if I liked it because, you know, I see a lot of people growing, grow, growing their own food, and I never done that before. I don't know how to. And as I get older, I feel like there's a lot more things I'd like to learn how to do. You know, um, grow my own food, be more sustainable my own, myself. Uh, but the other reason, the main reason is like, I love fresh vegetables and what better than having your own fresh vegetables in your back porch where I can just come outside, pick a few tomatoes, zucchini, basil, whatever fresh vegetables uh, or um, herbs I might need for the day and they're right here. Uh, not to mention like basil, cilantro and a lot of fresh herbs are really expensive and they, they wilt and they go bad pretty quickly. So, I mean, having a basil plant, I know it's a little out of control, but having a basil plant here and a cilantro plant in the corner, it's so simple to come out here, grab a couple, bring it inside, chop it up, and then it just stays out here, gets the sun. I water it once a day, and that's it. Very simple. Um, and I got, I got heirloom tomatoes, beefsteak tomatoes, I got vine tomatoes, and I've got the zucchini plant, and I want to start with that, but I like it. It's relatively easy for me, not too time consuming considering my schedule. And I plan on growing corn, lettuce, peppers, and we also ordered a, uh, a chicken house. Um, so we're gonna have about six, seven chickens and we're gonna do our own eggs. And uh, it's cool to get into your own food and be responsible for it. But I have to say, the, 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 the flavor and the taste of fresh vegetables from your own garden is just so much better than the grocery store. And if you guys are into any type of growing vegetables or you wanna keep it simple, you don't have to go crazy. Um, I know a lot of what I'm doing here is not really perfect, not really on point. Uh, I was trimmed a little bit late and I didn't really tie them properly. That's why they're growing all crazily and they're probably gonna snap off eventually when the tomatoes get big enough, but it was really easy. You can just get a large pot uh, and grow them in pots and put a stake in there and tie them up and just put them on your back porch and that way you can have something simple, little fresh vegetables. Not to mention, tomatoes are costly, um, especially if you're into eating fresh vegetables and, t uh, vegetables and tomatoes. Um, somebody commented that, you know, how do you keep the squirrels away, you know, from eating your vegetables and such, which is my dog. <laughs> Exhibit A, those squirrels don't go anywhere near the porch. So I'm lucky in that aspect, but she feels like she's missing out. But it's nice to like come over, you know, you want the zucchini, just pick it fresh, ready to roll. Hope you guys liked it. So I'm gonna show you how I incorporate uh, these foods into my current plan now. They've always been in my current plan, but now it's just a little easier just going on your back porch, pulling out what you need and going back inside. All right guys, any questions, let me know. A little Sunday cook-off day. As you can see, the kitchen's a mess and I'm cooking some crazy stuff with my wife, but that's not the point of this video, of course. Um, talking about micronutrient density and how to spice up different meals of the day and bringing as much micronutrients as possible into those meals. So I'll obviously give you examples of those meals and how I formulate them myself, but I'm also gonna get, kind of give a rundown of what is generally in my staple diet daily and how I incorporate those in, all right? So I just got into gardening. Zucchini and tomatoes are things that I do grow, but first off, outside of vegetables, um, eggs. So I buy pasture raised eggs. Um, there's a big difference uh, between like regular eggs, conventional eggs, um, you know, they call it free range, but it doesn't necessarily mean pasture raised. Free range can mean they're walking around an hour a day, then they're caged the rest of the day. So pasture raised eggs by far have the most nutrient dense yolks. Um, obviously yolks in general will have nutrient density. Don't think they don't. So it's not like if you're buying conventional eggs and that's all you can afford, don't think that that is something that is gonna be negated. It's still gonna get you a good a lot of B12 and choline and other important things in the egg yolk. But pasture-raised eggs is another uh, action-packed protein source that's very high in micronutrients that I always will use. You know, two to whole, two to three whole eggs a day. Um, peppers, <clears throat> peppers are good. Many people don't like raw peppers, of course, but sometimes I'll chop them up, put them into salads, um, or I'll chop them up with mushrooms add that selenium in there, um, obviously fiber as well, and I'll cook them in a little pan, and I usually will just spritz the can with a little bit of uh, macadamia nut oil. I take macadamia nut oil and I put it into a spray can, 
little spray bottle. That way, you're not using the Pam spray, they're gonna destroy your Teflon pans or your nonstick pans. You use these, a couple sprays. I'll slice up the peppers and some mushrooms, cook them in a pan, a little chicken, then I add some rice, maybe a little spicy uh, seasoning, and that'll be a particular meal. Um, carrots, I add carrots. Um, sometimes I was going for a kick for a while, I was doing a few tomatoes and a few carrots with each meal, but sometimes you can take the carrots too, put them on a baking sheet, uh, cut them, uh, slice them in half, then slice them again, and I'll put them in a, a ro and roast them, and I'll just add them and mix them in with my rice, or have them on the side, just a few in there, because obviously carrots and the beta carotene and the different nutrients you'll have with the different colors of the carrots. Um, leafy greens, I always stick with the baby, uh, sweet baby lettuce or baby romaine. Um, red leaf is fine too. Those digest really well for me. I do have ulcerative colitis, so I can't really digest a lot of cruciferous vegetables. I can't eat a lot of green beans, things like that. But there's certain vegetables that I can consume. And this is one of them. I might have a side salad at night and I might slice up some peppers, maybe chop up, take a carrot and grate it. And then I'll use uh, this for a salad dressing because people are always like, what do you use for salad dressings? Ariston's aged balsamic vinegar. It's only 10 calories per tablespoon. Um, and two teaspoons or a tablespoon max is all I'd ever need to cover the whole entire salad. Of course, avocado. You know, if I'm gonna substitute my fats, you know, I'll substitute and cycle the fats with some olive oil, some avocado, because obviously avocado is one of those superfoods it's packed with micronutrients, very important. Um, and if you're not one to buy avocados, you know, they have holy guacamole or those little pre-packaged um, avocado or guacamole packs where you can keep them in the fridge for almost three months, it's not gonna go bad. And each pack's about eight grams of fat. So that's a good way to get a lot of good nutrients, increase the micronutrient density in your meals. So if you're subbing out your fats for nuts, olive oil, or, or et cetera, you can use avocado or the little cups as I just explained. Zucchini is a great vegetable. I mean, it's not super micronutrient dense, but it is tasty. And um, my wife and I do a variety of things. We do zoodles. We'll you know make them into noodles and cook them in a pan, and then add um, chicken to it or olive oil or however oil you want to use. And that's something that we do when um, you know we're dieting. We want something a little more filling, kind of tricks you, and it does taste good when you if you cook it the right way in the pan. And as I said, tomatoes. Tomatoes are good. I know people talk about nightshades, you know, the issue um, with, you know, certain vegetables like such as tomatoes. It's not something you're gonna be concerned about. You're, you're really concerned about the bodybuilding diet is making sure that you do have some micronutrient dense foods in them. It's not like you're going to be consuming half of your total caloric intake with just nutrient dense foods, but you wanna make sure you incorporate them some. And most people have the biggest obstacle is how do I incorporate them if I don't really like vegetables? or how do I incorporate them if uh, you're, I'm on the go, or I'm in a hurry, or what's convenient. Because most of the time vegetables aren't convenient to most people. They just like to throw rice in a container with beef, sabi joe mix, or whatever, and then be out the door and make four of those meals and just eat them. But I will show you how easy it is and delicious it is to incorporate these foods into meals. Wyman's frozen blueberry is the best, and I buy these too. Wyman's banana berry. Um, it's got bananas, strawberries, and uh, Wyman blueberries in them. And these are the kind of the frozen fruits that I might add to my cream of rice, uh, I might add to oatmeal, I might add to you know, my rice and grinds that I use, or I just will take an animal meal shake. If I'm in a hurry, I'll take, some, uh, take about 15, 20 grams of carbs of this and add it to my shake, my animal meal, and that way it gives it a little cold consistency like a shake and I get some more micronutrient density uh, into that particular meal replacement. So here it's funny, uh, this is something my wife and I made that we'll eat over the next few days. Um, it is avocado mango salsa. And yes, is it super time consuming? No, but I mean, you know, we love it. And sometimes on a Sunday, it's wife night, you know, and it's date night or whatever, and you're trying to make something, make something that you can eat over the next few days that has a lot of micronutrients. And this has got tomatoes, it's got a little onions, um, mango, and um, we'll just add this to the meal. You could put it on a piece of toast, make a sandwich, add it to your chicken and rice. So it's a good way to spice things up and it adds more flavor since the, the kind of the, the boring old chicken and rice all the time. And uh, fresh herbs, I'm getting more into fresh herbs, you know, basil, cilantro, things like that. Um, a lot of people will dive into all the dry spices that have 
unbelievable amount of garlic, dried garlic and onion, and those can cause digestive issues. So, you know, as I showed you earlier, I have herbs growing out back, and I'll just walk out there, grab a few, slice them up, put them into my food, um, and that way it tastes great and it gets interesting. Everybody's complaining the off season is the diet's repetitive. It's only repetitive because you keep it that way. You just gotta have the know-how to kind of incorporate foods and vegetables. So I'm gonna show you how I do that with my meals. In the morning time, a lot of people, uh, you know, have like 400 grams of egg whites. Uh, people would be like, oh, it's too much. They're plain, they're boring. Um, I like to do is I add my vegetables to my egg whites. So what I'll do is I'll just heat up the pan um, and do one spray of Mac oil. And then I'll just cook, I'll put the peppers in there first, wait a couple minutes, put the mushrooms, spinach, wilt it, and then add the tomatoes right before just to warm it up. And then I'll, two more spritz of mac oil, and then I'll add my egg whites and scramble them with the vegetables, uh, semi-cooked vegetables in the, in the egg whites, or I'll make an omelet and fold it over. But I mean, it's a, semi, it's a good way to add micronutrient-dense foods into a good protein source. Um, because like, you know, most people get sick of eating egg whites and then they start drinking them but it's very easy to, to add a few. You don't have to add a lot. I add a lot. Uh, you can add just a little bit here and there, and then it all adds up at the end of the day. Because I know a lot of bodybuilders, you know, especially when eating a lot of mon large quantity of food, getting in vegetables becomes more difficult, um, and they, don't, they opt out of them. So just adding a little bit here and there can go a long way. So as I showed you guys before, I added um, peppers, tomatoes, spinach, and mushrooms into an omelet style uh, egg white egg white omelet. And then I have my three whole over easy pasteurized eggs on the side. This is tons of micronutrients in here. Sometimes the variation you could do too is you take three whole pasteurized eggs with egg whites, beat them up like scrambled eggs and then make it that way. It's kind of like a traditional omelet, but I like putting my over easy eggs on my toast. So I got five pieces of Ezekiel toast here. Obviously great fiber source and grains. And I got Wyman's blueberries and bananas here. And then sometimes I like to add uh, Green Mountain Gringo Medium Salsa. Um, it's, it's awesome. But this is how I do it. Um, it's very easy to do and change up your egg whites. So many people think of eating egg whites. I can tell you I've been eating egg whites probably every day for 17 years. Actually, since 2000, 2000. So it's been 20 years. I don't get sick of them. I just change the variation of how I make it. So be creative. So this is my meal two. Um, this is obviously a variation. Clearly, guys, you don't have to do this, but this is what I do to kind of incorporate more micronutrients to each meal in the day. I'm not a huge fan of consuming a large quantity of vegetables on one sitting. That's when sometimes people can get digestive issues or they get bloated. Um, some people do that because of convenience and they try to get their vegetables in. I rather have a little bit, little bits and pieces throughout the whole day. And then, of course, once you hit your fiber uh, goals and you hit your micronutrient goals. Um, relatively, then obviously you can have fill-ins, like sometimes I'll add in uh, pretzels, I'll add in obviously white rice, white rice size increases or cream of rice or pri uh, rice and grinds, and those are like you more of your fillers, your total carbohydrates. But here we have uh, peppers, mushrooms, and chicken with a little bit of macadamia nut oil. Um, and this is fresh basil from my garden that I just cut and put on the jazz and white rice. Another variation that I do sometimes is I'll do cilantro lime white rice, pull the jasmine white rice out of the rice cooker, and then I will take uh, flushed cilantro, and then I'll take a fresh squeezed lime and just squeeze it right over the rice, and it's super flavorful. Hey, <clears throat> trying to take a video here. It's <clears throat> my dog. And fresh sliced uh, mango. And then I'll add a couple, re my, meet my fat grams, some almonds. Some people might argue, oh, you can't have flavored almonds. Listen, guys, the, I, the best diet is going to be the diet that you follow, of course, um, and that you enjoy. I like flavored nuts. I have different, different bags of them, so I like to change it up. But to some degree, you got to have some sort of normalcy, the, a good flavor into your diet. Because if you don't like your diet and it's not full of flavor up to your satisfying degree, then you're just going to fall off and eat junk and crap and have a poor relationship of food. So that's one way I add uh, more micronutrients to this particular meal. And uh, we'll move on to the next one. This is a tuna sandwich of uh, Ezekiel bread. I buy skipjack line caught tuna. It's the lowest in mercury. Um, it tastes better. It's a little pricier, but it does not gonna, it's gonna expire on me. And I do like tuna sandwiches. And I mixed avocado instead of the mayonnaise to get the healthy fats. I have Cabot cheddar cheese on this. 
As many of you guys may not know, aged cheeses are much better for you. Aged cheeses do not have, aged cheddar cheese does not have lactose. It has zero grams of lactose. So digestibility is much better than a lot of people with cheeses or lactose issues. Also, aged cheeses have a high content of K2, vitamin K2, very good for your heart. I got some sliced oranges. If, if I were gonna choose fruits to include in a plan, if you're keeping fruits at a bare minimum, uh, berries and citrus fruits are great. Digestion's great and they have a lot of micronutrients. And then my fill-in carbs. Fill-in carbs are Snyder's pretzels. Um, it's just straight carbohydrates. There's nothing in them, very nutrient dense less. The opposite of what we're trying to shoot here for, shoot here. If I, my sliced tomatoes, if they were ready for the garden, they'd be putting them on here. So easy way to make things at home, micronutrient dense. Um, and obviously instead of your American crappy cheese, uh, choose aged cheeses, healthier fat. They also make healthier avocado mayonnaises. Um, and that way you can just swap out what you normally use to f for more micronutrient dense ingredients, such as this, all right? And yes, this can be eaten on a bodybuilding diet. This is another variation of adding vegetables to your meal. So today I made zoodles or zucchini noodles. Um, all you do is you buy one of these things. This is actually not a skinner. This is actually a, a noodle maker, a zoodler, so it's called. And you take your zucchini and just, psh, 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 and it makes it into these long noodles. And then you cook them in a pan and take one spray of mac oil, uh, a little bit of salt, and I spray them and I cook them down until they're nice and soft. And they actually have good flavor. And specifically, if you're dieting for a show, you can make a whole zucchini and make noodles with chicken and soy sauce. And it almost feels like you're eating noodles with chicken and little soy sauce. It gives you a little more, uh, a fuller variation of a meal that you eat when you're dieting when you're really hungry. Um, this is my, um, this is a low carb version of my meal of salmon. I do love salmon. Um, mustard dill is a, a seasoning or a sauce that I eat, condiment that I use for my salmon I bake in the oven. But this is a good, another good variation. Um, but it's definitely worth a shot. Zucchini is not like the powerhouse of all vegetables by any means, uh, but it does have a good source of potassium, vitamin C, and of course you're getting a little fiber content in there. And, and the other thing you guys go out to think about too is having a variety of vegetables. Some people get married to like one vegetable and that's what they have all the time. And if you're not into vegetables and you really hate them and that's what you can get by with doing, then so be it. Um, but it's always good to cycle at least between a few. Now personally, because of myself and my digestive issues, I do will cycle only between like four, four or five vegetables. I don't really venture outside of those because of my digestive issues because at that point, getting a, a greater variety of micronutrients that's gonna affect my digestion just kind of defeats the purpose of my situation. So change it up, but include them. Don't get lazy. I know some people just focus just on the macros, the rice and the meat and whatever fats they're, they're gonna have or use, but definitely wanna uh, incorporate them. It's not hard, it's not difficult. If you're one that does zero, maybe do two meals a day. If you're one that does two meals a day, maybe do three meals a day. Just a small change over time can kind of give great benefit. And once you do it for a while, I guarantee you're gonna notice a difference. What's up guys, this is my last meal of the day. Um, so what I did today was I did salmon. Uh, I did is I took uh, Atlantic salmon and cooked it in a pan, fried it in a pan. Obviously you don't need any oil or any butter because the fat from the salmon is can provide your lubricant uh, and prevent it from sticking. And once I got it almost cooked all the way through and I mashed it with a uh, spatula, I added a little hot sauce, cooked it, browned it slightly, and then I added my cooked mushrooms and wilted spinach, and then uh, fresh ginger, stirred it all up, and now I have like this little salmon dish here. So it's easily enhances the flavor of the dish and obviously gives you a much more micronutrient density in the meal itself without having to eat a side plate of vegetables if you're not into eating vegetables. White rice is my filler. My, I call it the filler carbs as in once you already have your proteins, your healthy fats, your micronutrient density, uh, foods like the, the vegetables and the fruits, um, I focus on the carbohydrate needs I need of the day and that can be filled with a variety of things such as white rice, uh, even English muffin or um, I had earlier pretzels um, and uh, I chose a little side bread here, sourdough bread, benefits of sourdough bread, very good for you, very easily digestible. Um, but this is a good variation. And um, just know that like, I don't want people to be super hyper-focused on just one thing or the other. Like people sometimes get too focused on the micronutrient density and they eat too many vegetables and their fiber intake goes up too much and they start having digestive issues, right? 
So you just want to make sure that you hit your fiber goal per day, you know, between 30 and 40 grams for most of us bodybuilders who are eating as many calories as we are, which shouldn't be hard to do. Um, and making sure that you're choosing uh, fruits and vegetables that digest readily. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower can be generally harder to digest, so you want to limit those or keep those at the end of the day. And, you know, and put a little bits and pieces of those micronutrient dense foods with each individual meal. That way you can kind of, it's kind of like you're getting your feeds and you're getting your feeds of everything you need completely all at once. Getting those uh, A, D, and C, um, B and C, A, D, E, and K, and your trace minerals. Very important. Um, but guys, I hope that helps. Um, but I can tell you firsthand myself and a lot of my clients who started eating more nutrient dense foods and even people that have seen my previous videos have sent me and they said that, wow, they feel so much better, their digestion's better, their energy's better, their mood's better. So it's definitely something you don't want to overlook.